today we're going to make this gorgeous laptop cover. It can be for your iPad or laptop or whatever device you want at hand. So this is a lined cover. So to do this, we're going to need the outside fabric and your device that you're going to cover. So it's either a laptop or an iPad or a tablet, but you want to cut your fabric so that you've got enough to cover the device plus a seam allowance of half an inch or if you want it not so snug to slip the laptop in and eye out about three quarters of an inch Side so seams. I'll just give you an idea for this one I wanted it like a sock basically very tight so this is half an inch seam allowance but I do have to slide it on so that's perfect for what I wanted However, if you do want it to be a little bit easier to slide on and off, then I would go with a three quarter inch seam allowance. On the top okay, the so once you've decided which one you're going to go for, you need to cut out the same size in your main fabric and the lining fabric. And then you will cut out the wadding, which is going to be basically the same size as your device so without the seam allowance that you've left and this will just mean that when you sew the seams together you'll have the wadding on the inside of the seams but you won't have to sew through the wadding along here so it makes them nice and not too bulky so once you've cut out all your pieces you can then put aside the lining and the wadding We'll be ironing that on in a moment. But first, we're going to create this detail that we've got on the front of the cover. So this is the ribbon with a little pen holder in it. So for that, now you've got the size of the length of your cover, you need to cut the ribbon so it just has a little bit extra. So measure a bit of an overlap at the top and a bit of an overlap at the bottom and then just cut that to size and then you need to cut another little bit but this time you need your pen or whatever you're going to use in the cover just to measure it just to wrap it around and you'll be sewing this into the side of the ribbon like this so you have enough for the pen that you've you've chosen plus enough that it will be hidden by the ribbon but you can still attach it so you'll measure that out and then cut that to where you want it as well so I'm going to go so there's a little bit fiddly this bit um, mainly because this ribbon is quite a narrow piece um, but I think I'm going to go with it about there so I'm just going to snip that okay and then you're going to fold it and pin it in place with that ribbon so you turn this over and pin the ribbon in place so you can use your device to find out where you want the ribbon I've done it with the design just to the right here if you want it more central or on that side but I'm going to stick with my design so it'll be measure leave your seam allowance on the side and just find out whereabouts you want it and then we're going to try and keep this ribbon as nice and straight as we possibly can so we will pin that in place With a little overlap at the top and then at the bottom if you want it to be exact you can take a measurement and mark the same measurement at the bottom here but I'm just going to do this by eye for the demonstration and then you pin that in place And then we're going to go and tuck in the little pen holder. 
so you need to fold that and then just pin that I've done it sort of three quarters of the way up and you pin that in place and then you will take that over to the sewing machine and sew two straight lines down either side of this ribbon and that will catch this little pen hold a bit in place as well okay so you want to if you want you can pin further down the line so it's nice and straight or you can just do it as you go without pins so you want to take that to the machine and back tack at the top and then do a nice straight line of straight stitch about two and a half stitch length all the way down and then back up the other side as well okay so i've just sewn this on the sewing machine straight line down one side over the little ribbon and then down to the bottom and then I sewed back up oops still got my threads back up the other side snip snip those off um and then yeah back up the other side and I did actually just sneakily trim away some of the ribbon there so it was not not showing at all and then all the way down to the end so that is that bit done so we're ready for the next stage okay so now that we've got that ribbon sewn on we can start to iron the interface onto the cover so just make sure it's in the middle in the center so you've got the seam allowance all the way around and then with a hot steamy iron just press that in place and then once that is all stuck down we're going to sew the lining on so this this is a really um, practical little project but it's also really quick you're just sewing in straight lines and it's really handy so when I've got my laptop I normally just shove it in my bag with my notebook and pen but now I can slip it in its little cover which doesn't take up any more room really because it's quite a snug little thing and then it's just protected um, rather than it just being loose in my handbag with my notebook so hopefully you'll find it as convenient with your laptop or iPad and it just feels you know a little bit of luxury having it such beautiful fabric okay so once that's on we are ready to sew the lining on. So we've sewn that on there and then we're going to sew the lining. Um, but first we're just going to make the little flap. So you need to decide again, um, this is totally sort of, um, what's the word, made to measure um, project. So the first laptop cover that I made, I had this little flap go over. But it was too small so what I decided was I was going to have it so it actually covers a little bit more and comes down a bit further because we're going to close it with one of these sort of antique brass looking little press studs so you need to measure the distance between your ribbon and the edge and then just cut a piece of fabric doubled so you've got the front and the back out of the main fabric and you want to do it so you leave half a seam allowance at the top and then however low you want it to come down so I think I'm going to have mine to come down to there because this one was too short so if we make it so it's pleasing on the eye for you. So I'm going to do my laptop cover is the nine and a half. So I'm going to do my little flap just half an inch in from the edge here and about an inch in from this ribbon. And I'm going to do half an inch seam allowance. So actually 
that is going to be in total six inches for my laptop. Obviously your laptop will be a different size or it might be a different size and the cover. So you basically cut a piece of fabric allowing half an inch seam allowance to go as the flap. So you sew that, three sides of that, then you can turn it out on this edge here, which will be inside the lining. So pin that, cut out the right piece of fabric, pin it in place, and then you're just going to straight stitch, half an inch seam allowance, all the way around those three sides, leaving this one open for us to turn it through. Okay, so I've just sewn straight stitch all the way around those. I'm now just going to cut the threads and the corners. Oops. And then we can turn this around, ready to sew it as we sew the lining together. So just cut these corners. And you can bring the seam allowance down to about half a centimetre just to avoid bulk on these now. There we go. And then we're going to turn it through that open edge. I don't know how I managed to miss all these threads. Okay, so then turn it the right way around poking out the corners with a little um, knitting needle or chopstick or a special tool you might have. And then just give that a press so that it's nice and flat. You can either thumb press it like I'm doing or you can use the iron and press that down. I think I will give it a little extra press with the iron. Okay, so that is ready. Our little flap that's going to close the, cap, the laptop cover just so it doesn't slip out. Right, so this will be like that when it's finished. Okay, now we need to get our pieces and don't forget the raw edge, line up the seams. So that's the center line. So I'm gonna have it back there and you can just pin that while you then put the lining on the top. So right sides together and line that up and then you can just pin that and take out that pin and then pin all along that edge so when you sew these together you won't be sewing through the actual wadding. So you can sew along the line. And actually I'm going to sew this way up because then you can use the wadding as your guide. Just making sure you get the flap in the right place. Okay, right. So we're just going to back tack and then sew along there over the ribbon again and over the flap. Okay, 
stop just at the end of the wadding. So we've sewn along that line um, and you can see that's attached now. So the next thing to do is to just pull that away. Little finger press, thumb press, and then fold it this way. And then we're going to sew along this edge and this edge. So we just need to get that all lined up nice and neatly. So I'm actually going to just open this seam. And that will give us a nice, nicer edge at the top. Little press. Can't find the mat. So I use a tabletop ironing mat here, um, rather than because I don't have the space for an ironing board. In Sarah loves to sew HQ, and I just find this really handy. Um, to be actually just have the little iron on the go for these smaller projects. Okay, so once that's been ironed, you should then be able to line them up a little bit easier and then it will all look a little bit neater for the finished thing. So here we go. Make sure that the flap is lying flat and pin these seams together. And then we can sew this on the machine. Okay, so once we've pinned the edges together, just sew in exactly the same way, a straight stitch. But this time we're going to sew along the bottom, or along the um, lining fab, the outer fabric, and we're going to leave the open end at the lining here, because this is where we will turn it and that way the joint the seam that's at the bottom of the bag is the one that we'll sew closed on the right side so that's why we're leaving this lining edge open okay so sew along those okay so we've sewed along that edge so I like to clip my corners now and then Turn it the right way round. So put your hand in, grab the corners and pull it through. And then when it's like that, you can again use your little knitting needle I've got here or chopstick and you can peg those corners into place like so. And then we're almost there. We just have to, we've got the flap there, we just have to sew this bottom edge on the bottom of the little duckies. So when the ducks are tucked in, they'll obviously be going the right way. So with this one, you want to just fold in What you need. So if you've left a half inch seam allowance and then we're just going to sew that across the bottom. 
and then that will be hidden inside the bottom of the laptop cover so you can sew it in the same colour thread because it will not be seen It'll just be a nice strong line if you wish you can sort of do a little ladder stitch hand stitch but because it's at the bottom on the inside I'm just going to do one line of straight stitches on the machine okay so then you just want to snip the thread and then poke the lining inside the cover like so making sure you've got this nice top edge so you can finger press the top edge nice and flat and then what I did was just top stitch it all the way around so to do that just line up put the corners into the corners there and then just carefully pin it and this is where you can sort of roll the fabric with your fingers to make sure that there's not too much yellow where you're going to sew so it looks like a nice neat edge so this will just help it keep its shape a little bit better um, and define that top edge so we can sew that all the way around oh, I've got a little bit of cut piece of fabric there pull that out okay and then I open the flap and sew underneath it um, so don't just make sure you don't sew the flap down or you can stop and start either end what I did last time yeah I actually think it might be a bit neater if we stop and start there but totally up to you it is your creation okay so just going to top stitch that all the way around when I'm sewing in a circular thing like sewing a sleeve on or sewing like this I tend to take that off and then you can slip your project over and it just keeps these separate so you know that you're not sewing too many layers together and then just go all the way around taking the pins out as you go okay start up again here so that I don't sew over the flap. Back tack again. Move the ribbon. And I just sort of keep rolling the fabric, the lining under so that it doesn't thread either side of the flap because I didn't break the thread when I was sewing because it's quicker I just have the one thread there and then at the start and the finish it would have made more sense if I'd have started actually one side of the flap okay now all we've got left to do so on the Preston on the back. So for this you'll need needle and thread and you just position the Prestons where you need them. So you'll stitch as shown and then just match up the top one. So it's up to you whether you want to sew the top one on first and then the bottom one but just double check that they're going to close in the right place 
and just do as I've done and um, sew around um, through the hole around the edge and back in again and then you're complete well done you've made your laptop cover we're gonna keep it low-key keep it softly spoken with no strings tied